Hello there, welcome to Genesis Malls. My name is Bob Waldron, and in this video, we're going to be doing a new um, brand to make a new inbox review. It is going to be of this really massive kit here. It is the Russian MiG 31 BBM Foxhound. It's by Hobby Boss and it is in 148 scale. So it is quite a big kit, hence the big, big box. Lovely sort of box art going on just here and sort of like a mid-air refueling thing going on. Um, there is a lot in here, so I'm not going to get out every single bag and show you absolutely everything because it'll take forever. But I'm just going to show off, um, you know, most of the nice, really cool sprues. So the first one that's coming up, we have our um, main top sort of fuselage and wing section just on here. So if we bring you in, sort of nice and close, and we can have a, a good look at the surface detail so looking at this first surface detail um, yes we do have the usual lovely recess panel lines recess rivets and everything um, it is very sort of crisp really nice smooth surface with this no um, sort of a rough surface going on um, the rivets they're sort of really nice and consistent um, got lovely detail going on sort of all around the back and everything um, even all our wings also I believe these are the bottom part of our wings I mean they are looking good also um, so there's like the, the main sort of surface detail which is looking well detailed very very crisp um, we do have the bottom of our fuselage section here which as you can see is quite long nice bit of packaging as well to go with it but I mean if we have a little look just along here we have again the same lovely lovely surface detail on here there is even um, where it's due some sort of raised areas also right and actually looking at um where it sort of comes over that 90 degree normally when things are getting molded it does sort of fade a bit but i'm not seeing our recess panel lines or rivets being faded um, where we have our weapons just here you can sort of see you know we've still got a load of detail inside where we'd be placing the weapons so you know if we do decide not to have weapons on we've got detail there also along there and hopefully as you can see looking pretty pretty sort of snazzy so those are like the big bits of this kit let's um, sort of open up a couple of sprues wherever my blade's gone Right, and we'll just show you some of the more sort of internal detail. All right, so let's put that out to one side. Again, we've got lovely packaging going on here. I mean, they do seem to add these foam bits where I'm presuming there's going to be some delicate bits, which, yes, there is some lovely delicate bits just here, probably for our um, actual... Uh, um, the actual canopy section just here very sort of faint fine detail which should sort of set that off rather rather nice just as you can see there a uh, bit of internal detail I, I'm sure there was an instrument display panel somewhere somewhere on here but I can't seem to find it again but anyway we've got some sort of nice internal details going on just in there where we can see sort of raised and recessed areas Right, some more sort of panel work as well. Um, detail is looking very, very crisp. Flash is looking very sort of minimalistic with this also. Uh, we do have the nose section. So, I mean, if you can kind of imagine it being about, um, shall we say, maybe about this big, um, which is quite, quite, quite a, a fair length in size. So you are gonna need a fair bit of space for this model because um, I know I'm, I'm running out of space to, to place all my kits. But yeah, again, you know, surface detail is just like the rest of the kit. Very crisp, recessed panel lines, recessed rivets, all looking good just there. On the inside, yes, we do have some ejector pin marks, but I do believe a lot of the detail inside here is gonna be taken up um, with um, sort of like you build the cockpit in its own little tub and everything, then it just glues to the side, no real detail on there. Um, so there's a load of lovely detail going on with that. Uh, we do have some exhaust cans in here. I'm not gonna exactly get them out, but looking at it, um, Oh, that is nice though. We'll, we'll, we'll probably show you that. Um, this looks like the internal side. 
to our air intakes, right, which there is a lovely bit of detail going on just in there. You might be able to just see that there's this little pattern going on. Um, I'm kind of feeling raised, but yet recessed in places as well. But you know, we've got some lovely pattern going on there to look through um, those exhaust uh, air intakes, sorry, for that. Um, moving along, I mean, there is just loads and loads of sprues in here, as you can see. Um, so I don't really want to get them all out. Here's a duplicate of what we've just seen, so we won't get that one out again. Uh, we have the big air intakes on here. Um, looking very crisp and detailed. I mean, I know they're in the bag, sorry to say, uh, but I do want to sort of move along with this. But looking like the rest of the kit, no major flash. Um, what we've got in this one, we've got some pylons. Again, surface detail is looking the same. Landing gear detail, de uh, a bit of landing gear detail um, just in there. Don't know how well you're going to pick that up, but a little bit of landing gear, de landing gear detail just there. Um, moving along, I think we've got to basically almost, no, we haven't got to copy that, but yeah, landing gears and um, weapon pylons. Moving along again, as I say, there was just so many sprues to this kit, which by the way, this kit is new tooled in 2016, so it is all nice and new. And I do like Hobby Boss. A um, few more bits and bobs just in here. Um, there was just so much detail that is going to be going on with this kit. I think I'll show you this one because we have some absolutely lovely instrument display panel detail. So let's just pop this one out and let's bring you in just on it. Absolutely looks stunning. Hopefully you'll uh, agree when the camera decides to focus. Lovely instrument display panel detail on there. All sorts of raised, recessed and just full of detail all inside there. So that's absolutely stunning detail um, and looking good with that. Uh, moving along, we do have, again, some more sprues. I, I think I'm just going to skip through all that because there is just so, so much. Um, then, in another compartment, we've got loads, loads, loads more. Right, so let's just get this out. We do have a nice little bit of photo etch. Hopefully, as you can see, just there, two sides worth of it. Um, not a massive amount, maybe a little bit of a gimmicky sort of thing to be able to go here, there's photo etch in this kit, but still, um, there's a little bit just there. We do have some lovely rubber tires. Uh, personally, I love them, people hate them, um, but I really do, do like the rubber tires personally. We've even got some white metal just in here. I think I'll get this out because this looks pretty good. Uh, I'm assuming, because it, maybe it's sort of like a big kit, they have decided to go off and give us like a bit of metal landing gear, which actually this is rather, rather detailed. There is a join line sort of running all the way around, which you're gonna have to take care of. Hopefully you can just see that is quite noticeable, um, which is, when you've got join lines on, on sort of like white metal, it is a little bit harder to get rid of than on plastic. But yeah, it's good to sort of see some lovely detail with our landing gear and nicely, just focus, um, nicely in metal just to sort of strengthen the weight of this model, which is probably what we're gonna be dealing with. So there's a nice couple of pieces there for that. Uh, then we have a whole bunch of weapons. I'm not totally familiar with Russian weapons, but this is a bag with four identical sprues. So four of these, whatever they are, big massive missiles of some sort. Uh, then we've got two identical sprues of two really big um, fuel tanks to go along with that. Um, I do believe we've got some sort of air-to-air -air missiles just in here. Again, we've got two duplicate sprues. So um, we are probably talking about four of those air-to-air -air missiles. Um, and then some more air-to-air. -air. Again, another duplicate sprue just here um, with some pylons and stuff. So it looks like we've got tons and tons of missiles and, and all sorts of sort of pick from with this. So 
fully, fully loaded, fully, fully beefed up. And um, we've got some more internal cockpit detail here, which has been nicely packaged again. So let's just pop this out. It is really hot here in the UK today, about 30 some odd degrees. I am really hot in here because whenever I do my filming, I have to turn extractor fans off and everything. So then it really starts to heat up as well as putting all the lighting on. But anyway, we have our landing, uh, so not that, we have our ejector seat bits just here. Uh, we do have, um, seat belts molded into this as well so we we do have that detail there um we can see a lot of sort of detail on the seats as well they're looking rather good um some ejector pin marks just here and they are sort of sticking out like a flashy bit of ejector pin mark so you know we're gonna have to sand them down um, but we've got two of them um then we have some more um cockpit detail which is more instrument display panel so we're, we're probably going to have sort of like different variants and different bits to choose from but lovely i do really like these actually they are well well detailed inside there um the actual cockpit tub itself we do have a whole bunch of detail going on in and around it as well so that's all looking good and then probably the side walls as well a um, whole bunch of detail, buttons, dials, all sorts of going on just in there. Then we have these three packets here. Um, I haven't actually opened this up as you can see. All right, so I'm assuming we do have a whole bunch of clear parts. All right, so we're just opening this one up and look at how snazzy, snazzy that is um, these clear parts we've got loads and loads of detail actually on this uh, bit of the canopy and where it's supposed to be glass it is all sort of nice and crystal clear not seeing any marks um, oh there's maybe a faint cobweb effect yeah just a faint one i mean it is not very noticeable um, you might be able to pick that up on camera just there you probably can see that now it's like this little hairline fracture um, that is um, I do believe that is due to when they sort of um, inject the clear plastic into the mold uh, and when they meet if they meet at different temperatures or something like that um, it can sort of leave these hairline fractures so it's nothing new it's not a crack it's nothing you can sand or polish out it is there it's stuck it's done um, you know that is it and I do normally find that if you find it in one you find it in them all so a um, little bit of a shame but it's not massively noticeable I know I rotate it in the light and you might be able to sort of really see it but um, looking at it I mean it's, it's not too bad it, I, I think we can get away with it um, but all the other detail around it is looking pretty um, spot on just there then we have whatever these are or i'm not 100 percent sure so i'm just going to open up let's have a look ah we've got another bit of a canopy section some sort of duplicate or something maybe it's a spare a different version or a different variant or so i think it's a different variant looking at it because the glass is a little bit bigger on there but nice and crystal clear with that as well and then i'm assuming we might have another one maybe another different variant or something yeah um, we've got another one i'm i'm not quite 100 percent sure but i don't know if it's spares or something but there is um, a fair few of them to be fair there's about three of them that look very much the same so probably different variants i mean i don't normally put spares in kits to be fair but um who knows we'll have a look in the instructions in a bit uh, before we get on to the instructions, we have our um, decals just here, which are nicely protected. So I'm just going to cut across there, open this out. And what we've got here is decals by, um, looks like they are by Hobby Boss. They are looking very nice and colourful, very neat. Um, everything seems to be lined up and in registry. The writing um, is rather, rather small. Um, 
potentially not sort of making it. I wouldn't say if you've got a magnifying glass on there, you could read something. Uh, but looking all good. And these are the marking decals. You've got another set of decals just here. And these are the actual set stencil side of things. Now what we've also got, which is quite interesting, is a lot of instrument display panel stuff going on here. So um, a nice bit of detail. So just coming in, um, this is quite cool. I don't know if it's like lots of different options, different way of doing things or different variants or something like that. Um, but yeah, there is a lot of different types of decals here. So we should hopefully have enough decals to get all our dials having like, um, some sort of display in there and that, all that kind of stuff as well to sort of um, really bring the detail out on those instrument display panels as well as we've got um, probably all the weapons decals as well going on just in there so um, quite interesting be nice to sort of dive in there and have a look a little bit closer but here we have um, the decal call out for all our weapons and I do believe it's um, giving us colour callouts as well which are in we have options for Mr Hobby, Vallejo, Model Master Tamiya and Humbro so it's showing you the different colour callouts for all the weapons there is a colour callout also um, for some markings now markings here we do have um, a sort of pretty standard sort of pattern here of the uh, MiG-31 BM uh, 34 red and then I do believe on the other side is the uh, MiG 31B um, this is 74 blue so two different options not a massive difference in these options but it's all there um, tells you where all the decals are and all the colors and everything as well as like nice color call out so you know you've got a lot of nice information all there for you a bit of advertising uh, the instructions themselves I mean might want to bring you in a little bit closer for these uh, instructions instructions we do have a uh, nice little bit no we don't normally we have a nice little bit of readout about the actual aircraft but not in this case showing you all the different sprues which as I says a lot of sprues which by the way um, this RRP is at around about 64 pounds which is a lot a lot of money um, but when I was searching around you can find this kit for um, less than that I've seen some going for like 47 pounds and stuff so um, is a lot of bit of money but if you shop around maybe not and actually with the amount of sprues you get with this kit lots and lots of plastic little bit of photo etch metal rubber tires loads of decals it's a big big kit um, it's, it looks pretty worth it and it's a brand spanking new tool uh, moving along what we have here is um, starting off with the cockpit section doing all your your um, ejector seats and everything um, instrument display panel uh, bringing your nose section together looking pretty sort of nice and sort of standard um, it does show putting the two bits of canopy just on here um, and then the bits that open up um, the ones where we've got about three four different types um, we'll see that later and then here we have the air intake with that absolutely gorgeous detail inside there both sides which is rather rather cool um, the landing gear I mean you know there is loads and loads of detail um, I did notice with this kit all round um, I, I do like it when they sort of make landing gear one of these things where um, it's like a box construction you build the walls up you build the bottom up because you normally tend to find you get lots more detail when they do it like that if they do it in one piece where it's one tub you normally find you've got detail at the bottom but not around the side so I do like it when you have this kind of build the walls up kind of construction lots more detail um, personally um, then it's like front nose section onto the bottom fuselage section uh, bringing in your air intakes this might be a bit of a fit problem just here um, normally whenever you've got this sort of big like f14 type air intakes or even you know f15s 
where they're on the side there's normally like potentially you've got to be sort of careful you know test fear maybe slight little bit of sand in make sure you glue it right because you can have some serious problems in these sort of sections wing sections coming down looks pretty simple um, ailerons and stuff look nice and movable which is rather rather cool um, does seem to be a lot of construction with the whole engine section as well um, then it does and here we are we do have these options of the different types of um, canopies in the open or closed section it does look like there's a fair bit of detail going on on the inside of them as well so they should be quite cool to build up do have the landing gear and here it is the landing gear it's one of these those metal parts is basically you got your metal part and then looking at this you take two pieces of plastics and you sandwich that metal in there it's a lot like the Tamiya Spitfire 132nd scale by Tamiya um, they sort of go along that route of you know let's put some metal inside of two pieces of plastic so you've got the lovely detail of plastic uh, but you've got the strength of metal at the same time it's quite a good way of going about it lovely rubber tires looking pretty sort of you know fairly easy to follow um, there is like all sorts of um, telling you what colors everything is as well as you go along and where decals go um, there goes the wheels in there um, wheel well doors and stuff looking fairly straightforward all your little bits and bobs going on in and around right then we come into the weapons um, those big nice weapons are looking pretty sort of cool actually loads of detail on them um, and the rest of your weapons and then it does look like they give you this nice bit of a you know where you can put weapons on which pylon with this kit so um, all in all the instructions look pretty sort of you know fairly easy to follow it looks like it's going to go together rather well maybe one or two areas you want to be sort of careful of tons and tons of plastic I mean this is a big kit it's nothing small nothing little um, it's going to take you a fair bit of time to do it um, the surface detail looks absolutely fantastic no problems with that uh, flash or eject pin marks um, I didn't really see any flash to be fair um, there was one or two eject pin mark places which is, it really isn't such a big deal but I think they've really sort of Lee sort of nicely cracked this kit so for a MiG-31 um, Hobby Boss is probably definitely going to be on your list and uh, you know it's one of these kits where do you know when I sort of normally when I sort of do an inbox review and I look through it some kits make me go oh I really want to build that and this is one of these kits it really does um, look really nice to to actually build so definitely a big thumbs up here at Genesis Models for Hobby Boss's 142nd scale MiG-31 so um, hopefully you have enjoyed this inbox review here at Genesis Models so until next time my name is Bob Waldron and I'll catch you next time Thank you.